In this question, we have to find force between two uniformly charged solid hemisphere of radius r with equal volume charge density of rho. So these are the two hemispheres of equal charge density rho, and you have to find force due to one hemisphere on the other hemisphere. So let's see how to do this. So in method number one, in method number one, I am taking a thin spherical shell as element. Okay, and uh, this is the line which is dividing. it in two hemispheres this is the left one and this is the right one and i'm taking a very small section here of area da and this thickness is obviously dr okay so this is a patch of area da and thickness is dr and force on this element okay force on this element if we find so this force df on this element is uh, charge multiplied by electric field at this location okay so let's say the charge is dq and electric field at this particular location and this is that location here in this location electric field is an e the charge we can write like this so this is the density and density multiplied by the volume so patch area is da and dr is the thickness so this is the charge and electric field uh, we can take so at a distance r uh, from uh, uh, the center of solid hemisphere the electric field is rho r by 3 epsilon not so uh, there may be confusion in for some students that uh, why this is rho r by 3 epsilon not because this electric field is due to all the charges this uh, charges on this uh, right hemisphere charges on this left hemisphere and if you are calculating force on this right hemisphere due to this left hemisphere then we should be writing the electric field only due to this one okay so there might be some confusion re regarding this so we can say that uh, if we write this electric field which is due to all the charges okay so this is definitely due to all these charges at this particular location so this electric field is rho r by 3 epsilon at this particular location and uh, we are finding the force using this electric field but what will happen uh, suppose you are finding force on this element okay so and uh, this element is also exerting force on this element and when we integrate all these forces okay when we integrate all these forces over this right hemisphere if i integrate uh, uh, these forces if i add these forces on this right hemisphere so what will happen uh, if i take this element so this element uh, and this element let's say so suppose these are the two elements so this element will apply some force on this and in return this element will also apply some force on this and those forces will be cancelled so forces within forces within the right hemisphere due to the charges on themselves will be zero okay so forces applied within this will be zero so effectively we will calculate the force due to this left one on this right one if we integrate this one suitably if we integrate this suitably then we will get the force due to this left hemisphere on this right hemisphere internal forces will be cancelled out okay so that's what i have written here the internal forces of charges within the right hemisphere will cancel out so this integration will give us the force on this right hemisphere due to this left hemisphere so let's proceed with the calculation now so this is that diagram again and this is the expression of df okay so if i do df by da so this is the force perpendicular to that area and this is da by da so i can uh, say that this is electrostatic pressure at this particular location so electrostatic pressure expression will be this and this pressure will be uniform everywhere okay so at every point of this uh, thin spherical shell uh, this is the electrostatic pressure so on this particular thing i can write the force i can write the net force on this particular thing is pressure multiplied by the projected area and this projected area concept can only be used when pressure is uniform okay so pressure everywhere everywhere on this uh, you know, on this points will be uniform okay so i can write uh, pressure multiplied by that projected area so this will give me the force on this uh, uh, shell uh, hemispherical shell of radius small r and uh, now i want to uh, find the net force so these are the shells okay so these are the shells and this shells are spread over 0 to capital r okay so i will integrate this expression to find the net force and force is obviously in this direction so net force will be in this direction because uh, this component and this components will be cancelled out okay upward downward components will be cancelling and net force by symmetry or any other thing you can say this is towards right on this uh, right hemisphere 
so i will integrate this expression from this to this and this is the net force okay so this is one of the methods now let's see the method number 2 and uh, here before proceeding further let's see how this thing is coming here projected area so <coughs> projected area concept why this is working here so in brief uh, i will be explaining this suppose uh, this is a hemisphere on which at each point the pressure is p and due to that pressure i need to find the force so force on this very small element df is uh, pressure multiplied by let's say this area da and this can be resolved into components like this okay so we can see from this symmetry or like uh, that these forces are cancelled and these forces will be added up so net force is pd cos theta and this is you can take p out because p is uniform if p is non uniform then you cannot take it out okay so now you can take it out so it is integral da cos theta and what is integral da cos theta so let's see in this diagram so this is your da vector direction for this particular patch of area da and this is the component da sin theta and da cos theta so da cos theta this is the vector and uh, the area will be something like this so you can see that uh, this uh, da cos theta area will be like this this is the component of that area now you can project this area on this base okay so this is that base so project this area so this area is da cos theta so likewise for all for all these things you can project this uh, area on this base okay so when you project this area on the base so all uh, integral da cos theta so you are adding this 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 areas okay so all the patches will be on this base so obviously this total area will be the pi r square so this is called projected area projected area uh, in this direction when we are looking from this direction so uh, this is the projected area now method number 2 method number 2 is uh, uh, slightly more mathematical we are using a spherical coordinate system okay so a spherical coordinate system this is a 3d coordinate system so this is the spherical coordinate system in which we use three uh, parameters like r theta and phi okay so what is r r is the radial distance of that point p from this uh, origin and theta is uh, uh, this angle which is uh, made by this r vector with the z axis and uh, the projection of p on this uh, xy plane here making an angle phi with this x axis so these are your r theta and phi so these are the three coordinates okay and here i have shown the, what is the infinitesimal lengths in each direction so this is the r cap direction this is the theta cap direction in this di in this direction theta will increase if you move in this direction and if you move in this direction then your phi will move okay so in r direction the infinitesimal length will be dr in this uh, theta cap direction so if you move from some point here to here like this so you will move you will rotate by d theta and uh, this length will be r d theta and if you move in the direction of this uh, phi cap direction so this is the projection of r on this uh, plane okay so this projection it will be r sin theta and now you are moving in this direction so this length will be r sin theta d phi okay so this length is r sin theta d phi so these are the infinitesimal length in is direction uh, uh, for an example suppose uh, if i want to find the volume of this uh, sphere of radius capital r using this spherical coordinate system so i can take a volume element okay uh, infinitesimal volume element and Uh, that infinitesimal volume element you can uh, take like this and these are the three and these are the three components of that infinitesimal volume and if you multiply this three so this is the volume okay so this is the volume so if you create this volume now you can integrate with the suitable limit this will be a triple integration because we have dr d theta and d phi okay so let's understand how these limits are set here so what this theta does okay so you this theta Uh, this theta permit us to move this element like this okay so you can move this element like this over it okay so using theta you can move a patch element uh, like this this is like a watermelon this is like a watermelon element okay so this is like a watermelon element okay and uh, now to cover this so whole thing okay now to now to cover this whole thing so you, you can revolve this uh, watermelon like this okay to revolve you need this phi okay so to revolve it you need this phi so what are the limits so for a small r obviously this limit will be zero to capital r and for this theta 
so you want to move from here to here okay you want to move from here to here and you can see uh, for theta 0 uh, you will be here okay and now you are moving from here to here so theta will go from 0 to pi okay so this is that angle 0 to pi uh, so the watermelon is now completed now you want to move this watermelon on this surface so that all these points are covered okay so now you will move it like this so you have to move it by 2 pi so this limit of d phi phi limit is 0 to 2 pi now you can integrate uh, r square is r cube by 3 sin theta uh, integration sin theta integration you will do so it will give you cos theta and from 0 to pi it will be 2 and d phi integration will be simply 2 pi so this will be 4 by 3 pi r cube now let's apply this thing to find the force so i have taken the infinitesimal volume element here and on that the force can be written as uh, df and the net force uh, uh, i am calculating on this upper hemisphere due to this lower hemisphere and obviously uh, these components the component along this z axis will be uh, added so that will be df cos theta so df cos theta df is obviously the charge multiplied by electric field at this location so charge is rho multiplied by volume and volume for volume you have to multiply these three lengths okay and electric field as discussed earlier also in method number one this is rho r by 3 epsilon naught and why this is rho r by 3 epsilon naught i have explained earlier so we can use this electric field <coughs> now the net force so for net force you will put all these things here and then integrate with suitable limits so small r small r obviously it is from zero to capital r now theta so i am calculating the force on this one only okay so on upper hemisphere so my water water balance slice will go from here to here only okay so that angle will be 0 to pi by 2 now earlier if i go from here to here it will be 0 to pi so from 0 to pi by 2 and now this uh, water balance strip okay this water balance strip and i have to revolve it to cover this complete surface so i have to revolve it fully like this so it will be 0 to 2 pi so now you integrate uh, separately all these uh, three variables okay so 0 to capital r 0 to pi by 2 0 to 2 pi now you will get the same answer using the integration it will be sin theta cos theta that will be sin 2 theta by 2 and it will be cos 2 theta by 2 okay so uh, integration is very easy you can do it so this is the final answer now one more question i am taking here and that question is uh, uh, what if if uh, the densities are different okay so if density is let's say rho 1 and rho 2 so we have calculated when the entire is the same density now it is if rho 1 and rho 2 then what is the force applied by this hemisphere on this hemisphere so let's see how to do this so the hint you can use is to use the scaling factor okay so you can use some scaling factor to find the force okay now suppose if all this is rho 1 density if all this is rho 1 density so we have already calculated the net force will be this rho 1 square pi r 4 divided by 12 epsilon naught and i have taken two small elements uh, one here and one here and suppose uh, this a element is applying a force on b like this f b a force on b due to this a when all over the density is rho 1 now suppose this rho 1 is replaced by rho 2 and let's say this is rho 1 itself so now what will happen what will happen uh, these two elements uh, earlier they were exerting force like uh, this one okay so force on b is fba now it will be changed it will be some f dash ba and what change will occur here uh, when charges are q1 q2 so you will say q1 q2 by r square when q1 is replaced by q3 when q1 is replaced by q3 so you will say okay it is q3 by q1 times now okay so because forces are proportional to the charges okay so now this rho 2 is replaced now, now this rho 2 has replaced this rho 1 so force between these two will be scaled up uh, scale scaling factor will come here okay so what is scaling factor will come rho 2 will be in the numerator okay so here the charge will be some rho 2 times volume or all okay so all the things are same but uh, here the charge will be some rho 2 times volume here the charge is rho 1 times volume okay so the factor will be rho 2 by rho 1 this rho 1 will cancel the effect of earlier rho 1 and this rho 2 will put that rho 2 effect here so rho 2 by rho 1 this will be the factor and this factor will be all over because uh, if you see these two so there will be this factor if you see these two this two this two so in all these pairs this will be the factor so overall in this force there will be factor of this one rho 2 by rho 1 okay so we are calculating force on this right hemisphere due to this one so 
uh, here the force was this one now you will use this factor so this is the factor and this is the earlier force so this is the force now in this situation so this is the force when densities are different